What is a web form? How are they different from DocuSign Power Forms? When should you use them? And how do you set them up? Those are all the questions I'm going to be answering in this video. A web form is pretty much like a power form. It's a self-service document in the sense that you as the sender of the document or the signature requester don't need to know the name and email of all the signers at the time of the signature request. When sending a standard DocuSign envelope, you log into DocuSign if you're not using an integration and have to provide the name and email of who you're sending the document to. With a web form, you're only creating the form with placeholders in your web form template. And then the link to that web form can be embedded on your website or it can be embedded on your application or it can also be shared with other users by email. It's just a link. But web forms are much better than power forms because they support much more functionalities. And the biggest one is that they are natively mobile responsive. Have you ever tried to fill out a complex document on a tiny screen where you had to scroll through horizontally and vertically to try to figure out, to try to read the whole sentence. It probably wasn't a good experience and that's exactly what web forms were built for. They make filling out documents with lots of form fields easy to fill out because they adapt to the size of your mobile devices. I've created a full video that explains the difference between web forms and power forms just here. So if you want to check it out, I recommend you do so. For now, let's create a web form based on this application form. It's a dummy loan application document where up to two signers can request a loan. And if we were using a power form, we would have to make the signature and the details of the second person, the spouse, required or uh, optional. The problem if we make them required is that if someone doesn't have the spouse, they will have to enter some dummy information. If we were making the spouse fields optional, then the main signer could simply forget to fill out those forms because you know sometimes DocuSign just skips from one required field to the next. So potentially these fields will be missed and you will have to do some manual follow-up. And that's one of the benefits that the Power Form brings. We can create some questionnaire that will, based on the answers to questions, turn on some required fields. So in this case here, where we want the spouse field or for them to be required, however, conditional to the answer, do you have a spouse, yes or no? And if the answer is yes, then those fields should become required, which is not really possible in a Power Form. Because in the Power Form, as soon as you enter the Power Form, you have to fill out the name and email of the spouse. But if you miss those, then you don't have a chance to add them later. Don't worry, everything will make sense when we start building the web form. And if we haven't met before, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm an ex DocuSign implementation consultant. Back in 2019, I was working with DocuSign. And since the end of 2019, I founded SolarSign Consulting, a digital transformation agency that helps businesses that are drowning in paperwork implement document automated workflows primarily with DocuSign. So if you deal with lots of paperwork, you can save hundreds of hours by automating the boring things like manual contract creation, signature chase, saving and storing information. But to do this, you're going to have to first map your workflow, then learn how DocuSign works, create your DocuSign templates, and then integrate DocuSign with all the apps that you use every day. So if you don't want to struggle on your own, you can book a strategy session with one of our DocuSign automation consultants using the link just down below. We'll analyze your process and determine the best action plan for your unique needs. And if you're more of a do-it-yourself kind of person, you can also download my free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet. It will help you get started with DocuSign on the right foot. You'll have all the fundamentals that you need to start learning about templates and integrations and automation. So now let's go back to creating this web form. All your templates field labels have to be meaningful. So you see here, my field label says main applicant address. You don't want to just leave your text fields or drop down fields or any other kind of fields with the, the first data label that DocuSign assigns randomly because DocuSign will give you an error when you want to create your, your web form based on this template. So make sure that all your fields are meaningful. All right, so let's just use this uh, template as our web form basis. I'm going to save and close and then go to my template, start web form and create a web form. Here I've got two options. I can either use an e-signature template as the basis of my web form, which is what I'm going to choose, or I can start a web form from scratch. This option is to create web forms that are not template based, but can be added in Maestro workflows. If you haven't watched my video on how to create Maestro workflows, I recommend you do that next. For now, we're going to use the e-signature template as the basis, and we are going to choose our uh, DocuSign 
loan application example, and I'm going to click on next. I'm going to give this web form the name loan application form and then click apply. And here, the first thing that I want to do is to define what pages I'm going to need. So the first page is going to be the landing page or welcome to ABC credit. Let's just say we call ourselves ABC credit. We can have a little description just down below. We can just say begin to start your application. You can customize the way this text appears with bold underlined by following the DocuSign markdown syntax. Um, you can read about that if you want things in bulk, italic, bulleted, numbered list and links. You can do all of that in here. I'm just going to keep it simple here. And then the, the, the button will, I just wanted to say begin and not start. Now my untitled page, I want to rename this because it doesn't look very nice. I'm going to say main details. And here I've got a set of required fields. So the main applicant name, I'm just going to check quickly. So the main applicant in my DocuSign template is mapped to the main applicant name and main applicant email. So those two fields, I definitely don't want to delete them. I can rename that field name. And if you remember that field name was the data label of our DocuSign template. So I can just say, what is your name here? And then what is your email will be the field just here and then here co-applicant name and co-applicant email here is where if i go back here and go to my additional signers co-applicant name and co-applicant email tied to my template role co-applicant and so here i don't want to force my first signer to have to provide a co-applicant name and co-applicant email so what i'm going to do is add a question that is not part of my template and i'm going to say do you have a spouse for example, I know it doesn't have to be a spouse, but it's quite simple to understand. And I'm going to define two values, a yes and no. Yes. And then no. I am going to apply. And so that question needs to be required. And here, what is the name of your spouse? What is the email of your spouse? And now I'm going to set a condition that says if the answer to this question is yes, then I want to show those fields. But if the answer is no, I want to hide them. So I'm going to go to rules and create a rule and say that if the answer to do you have a spouse is yes, then I want to show what is the name of your spouse and what is the email of your spouse. And there you go. I'm going to click on apply. I can do a preview if I want. What is your name? What is your email? Do you have a spouse? No, we don't have any other questions here. But if I answer yes to this, then those two questions appear. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to show you another thing. So let's just say those are the main details. And then here, employment details, maybe I agree to the terms and conditions. The last thing that we can do is to require the primary applicant to initiate a signing session from their email. So they access the web form, enter their name and email. And before they can complete the web form, they have to click on the link to access the web form in case you want to make sure their email is correct. What you can also do is on the thank you page, you can add a title. So thank you, a subtitle, and you can also add a button. For example, go to the next step. And so that would redirect your users to your website. All right, let's click activate. This is just telling me that it's going to replace the draft of the web form, which is fine. And now I can go back and fill out my web form. Let's just say that I do have a spouse. What is the spouse email? Again, John Smith. What is the email? That's going to be Sophian plus John at solusign.com. And then date of birth, citizenship, next. Spouse mobile. Okay, we have $1 available. Our net worth is $2, which is very wealthy. And we have not been convicted. No, we're good guys. So now all my form fields should be filled out on the DocuSign form. I could technically just click on sign and that's it. So if I click on start, it should take me straight to the signature page, which is the case. I'm going to click on finish. But I can still change the fields here if I realize that I've made a mistake. And now the next thing that should happen is that I should receive an email from DocuSign asking me to sign as the spouse, as John. And here is the document as sent to John. I'm going to click on review. And John is not going to see the, the, the web form. John only sees the normal envelope. And that's because John doesn't need to provide 
a lot of information. It's only the signature. It would be an improvement if the following recipients could see the web form version as well, because in some cases, the second recipient also has to provide information. But in, at the time, this is how document, DocuSign has built their web form. But now back to our web form, we've got two ways to share the web form with people. We can either take this URL, copy it, and send it by email. We could add this URL to our intranet, or you could also embed the web form completely. So this is an example of a web form embedded on our SoluSign website, as you can see. And so instead of sending the DocuSign branded URL, you can just keep the branding consistent and have things uh, hosted on your website. There's one more really cool thing you can do with web forms and it's to pre-fill them before you send them to your signers. There's no point asking for information you already have on file. So why wouldn't you want to send this web form to your signers with information they already have on file so that they can see it, they don't have to fill out information that's already there. But in case they want to change something, then the information they enter in the web form, so whatever they end up changing, updates back inside of your database. Let's just assume that you already know the name and email of the signer as well as their address. What you would normally want to do is to create something quite cumbersome. So you'll need to get the web form URL base. So something like this. Let me just expand that a little bit so that you see what needs to be done. And then you will need to add a pound sign and then reference the API field, the API a reference name of the field you want to prefill. And don't worry, you don't have to do all that. I'm just showing you the long way so that you understand what's the quick way to do it. And then you have to do equals and then you enter the value. So Sofian Saudi. So if I enter this inside of a new page, technically my applicant name is filled out. And this is the super long way of doing it. But at SoliSign, we made it much easier. So you can actually download a copy using the link just down below, a copy of this spreadsheet, which will help you fill out all your web form fields automatically without having to construct the URL by yourself. Let me show you. Whatever field you want to pre-fill, you're going to copy its name and paste it here. I've already done it for my applicant name. I'm going to do this for my applicant email. And I'm also going to do this for my address line one, city estate. Now I'm just going to fill this out with dumb information. So as you can see, I've filled out all the information in here. So those are all the form data that I want to pre-fill my, my web form with. And here I have the URL that has been constructed with all of this. So I'm simply going to copy this URL and open a new tab and paste that here. And technically if it worked, my form should already be pre-filled with all the information that I've entered in my uh, spreadsheet. So Josh Smith, Josh example, 123 Main Street, New York, New York. And so now the only thing you have to do is to take that pre-filled web form URL, insert that into an email or a WhatsApp or text message. And once they open the web form, everything will be filled out for them. And if they change something, so let's just say they now live at four or five street small lane, then you can set up an integration that's going to extract all the signers inputs and update the profile of that person in your CRM, your ERP or your HR software. So this is something that you don't want to struggle doing on your own. Our consultants are here to help. And you can also book a strategy session with one of our DocuSign automation consultants to explore our consulting options and define what the best implementation roadmap looks like for your unique needs. I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing. Ciao.